Because when you Sagan, when you, Sagan. When you create, you cannot have the Federal Reserve System without the tax system. Right. Okay. It would make sense. Yeah. Most people don't know that. So if I create money out of nothing, I have to be able to take it back out of circulation. So what am I really doing? I create money out of nothing. It it it. it it doesn't. It's not created with value because I didn't have to dig into the earth and get some gold. I, I just printed it. I just said it's this much. So when I do that, somebody has to go into debt. The government goes into debt. Then people go into debt. And then when they pay the debt back, and that ends up in the payment of taxes on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. The value that people put into the economy to get the those units of currency, that value comes out of the economy, and it disappears. This is a just another slave system. Yes, it is. 100%. It's farming people. So yeah. anyways, uh, they try to push in a attack. The, the United States government or whoever's money interests behind all this, the Druids. like um, The Druid government. Babylonian the bastards. Druid Babylonian bastards, right. So these guys try to put in a, a mandatory tax, mandatory tax system, imposing an income tax, and it kept getting stri stricken down. Now, part of the reason for the Civil War without going into too much of it was to bring in a centralized taxation system. Mm -hmm. Because back then you had banks doing their own thing. You had every bank, you know, had its own currency, which is really what it should be. We just shouldn't have a uniform currency. But anyways, so... They go through the Civil War and they kind of whittled away at what we had. And then they were able to, here's what they did. They figured out that if they trick people into thinking that it's required, then people will participate in a way that then will create the obligation for them to pay a tax. So the way the system works now is you don't have a tax obligation until you file a tax return. So you don't have an obligation to file a tax return until you file the return. <laughs> So if I create a company for somebody, I don't talk about 1040s because if people filed, that's kind of a different animal because if you have a history of filing 1040s, the government's going to harass you if you stop. So don't don't misquote me here and don't say, hey, I could just not file. Don't do that. Think this through. But if, but if I want my client to have a different tax treatment, so let's say we get into cryptos, right? And I'm dealing with millions of dollars with the cryptos. This is dramatic. That's why I say millions of dollars with the cryptos. All right. So I want to manage those cryptos, the property rights through a company, not individually in my name. Because when I dispose of the asset, I want the company to have the liability. But here's the difference. If mm -hmm. I have the liability, I cannot change my 1040. I'm on the hook for whatever one type of income tax liability. I can't get out of it. I might have some deductions, so what? But if I have a different company, if I'm using a different person, a company, I can choose my tax treatment. So what I typically do is I set up a company that can have a tax treatment of completely deferred perpetually. So I can dispose of assets and, and I can make millions of dollars in profit per week if I want. And I can put these in a tax deferred company. It's not an exempt exemption. It's not a nonprofit. All I'm doing is holding the money in a holding company and I can spend it and I can buy stuff and I can do whatever I want with it. But I, but I am not realizing a gain and I'm doing this all legally. Mm. This is interesting because in the 90s, I started doing it that way to rescue companies from abusive tax collection situations. And uh -huh. they owed the tax on stuff. And I would reorganize the company with a new company that deferred all the taxes like a doctor's office. And then so, the IRS would get nothing. So am, am I right then from your website, aceofcoins.com, you ask, do you have a bulletproof bank, uh, bank account? So is one of the things you do is help people then set up the proper structure in which they can yeah. hold and, and trade crypto without... Yeah. Uh, realizing taxable gains. Exactly. That's exactly what I do. It, and it doesn't, cryptos is just another property. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that for business income, for invest. I could do that with your stock market, your stock trading account. Uh, I've, I've rescued companies that have all kinds. I could do that with a, a big multi-million dollar lawsuit. Here's the, here's the first risk I, I want my client to avoid. And it's the cost of litigation. When, when people are, let's say, investing in crypto, because some people that's their angle, right? It's not, it's not my angle, okay. by the way, I, I want to use right. it for e-commerce. You know, I want to get paid yep. in crypto, right? It's that's a, what I want. Yep. But yep. Uh, a lot of people want to speculate in it. So if they are able to buy and sell and trade and swap between different coins, if they're experts in that area, then they could, uh, without having taxable events that entire time, seems mm -hmm. like they could build up quite an uh, astonishing portfolio, much larger than they could in the traditional finance world. You can. I've seen people do it. I've seen people make over $100 million in cryptos just by knowing how to forecast. And you don't even need a fancy corporate structure. You could just do it in your own name if you understand these basic concepts. And just understand this, the, the software that's supposed to be tracking coins and trading and all that is completely wrong. It's really? completely wrong. Unpack Absolutely that. wrong. You and I did an interview on this, Uncle Odd, and I was explaining yep. 
a very basic algebraic equation that can be used to calculate your taxes if you actually chose to sell the coins in your name, which could be avoided. But let's say you did that. Yep. You can use basic algebra. You you should not be using. So your your whole collection of coins, and you can you can parcel out the set the part you're selling or not. But the whole it doesn't matter what coin you're in and what you what you traded back and forth during the time you own the coins. What matters is the cash in and the cash out. Mm -hmm. With that right. same yeah, that's it. Well, that it makes sense. It doesn't matter that it's coins. It, it, it doesn't matter that it's gold. It doesn't matter that it's rice. It just matters that I put some cash over here, own some property, and I disposed of it, and the IRS would agree. Okay, you got some gain. And here's – the IRS would tell you how to do this, by the way. But their software is wrong. Mm. Well, of course. Of course it is. Don't ever use it. Don't ever use Coinbase. What I tell people is use the Coinbase for what it's for. You put some cash in your bank account, and you go into Coinbase, and you buy a coin. So let's say you want to buy – a series of coins and you're going to use coinbase if, it, if coinbase is even still usable I, mean, I think they ruined the whole platform but <laughs> in any case so you take a hundred thousand dollars you go into coinbase assuming you can even do this in a week uh and, and you and you buy bitcoin but mm -hmm. you don't want bitcoin you want six other coins but you buy all bitcoin and then you transfer the bitcoin in your wallet on coinbase to your bitfi or whatever <laughs> hardware device right off yeah. of the platform of coinbase right yep. then you allocate so there's no record of your allocation. I mean, that's another way to do it. Not that it matters that they see what you're doing, but why not allocate on some platform that they can't track it and no one's scaring you with 1099s and all that. And by the way, the 1099s that these exchanges issue, I take those, I eat those for breakfast. So you get a, you get a 1099. So my client calls me, I get a 1099 from Coinbase. And so I ask them, I qualify to make sure that I'm not going to go down this road of I, I made a mistake. Invariably, no, I didn't sell any coins for any dollars at all at any time. And I verify this in like three or four different ways, okay? Because I, I know people want to tell me the truth, but sometimes they don't understand. But once <laughs> I verify that my client did not dispose of a crypto coin for dollars, and Coinbase has the nerve to send him an erroneous 1099 that says the value he owes is based on the value change and however the magical thing they did in <laughs> Harry Potter incantation to figure out the 1099 tax – I write a letter to the IRS. Now, the IRS actually has a, a, a very sophisticated office. You can ask for a legal determination on something. So I, I write a letter to the IRS. It's, it takes six pages because I, I have to use the IRS's form. The <laughs> IRS tells you how to write a letter to it. People don't know this. So I write a letter to the IRS, and I make a couple of factual statements. And the IRS always agrees and says, yeah, you're correct. The 1099 is erroneous. Exclude it from your 1040, more or less. That's what I do for the client. Exclude it from your 1040. Hmm. So and have the track record, yeah, the, I, have the paper trail from the IRS. Yeah, it's helpful. I mean, I've never had yeah. a problem either way, but still, it's kind of nice. It looks cool. But <laughs> I can do so, that, you know, people are like, whoa. 